Today on Under the Big Tree, teaching an old Mac new tricks, breathing a new life into a 2010 Mac Pro Tower by installing a Radeon R9 280X graphics accelerator. Up to now, I've never really been concerned with graphics performance in my 2010 Mac Pro. It's an awesome computer and I've used it since I bought it new, seven years ago, but I've always only used it for audio post, and so as long as it could play back a QuickTime movie uh, in Pro Tools, it didn't matter to me what the graphics performance was like. But now that I'm cutting together YouTube videos in DaVinci Resolve 14, it's a whole different ball game. The simplest edits and the simplest effects seem to bring the computer to its knees. Specifically, the Radeon HD 5770 card that came with the machine in the first place. I realized that it was time to upgrade the graphics card in my machine, so I started doing a bunch of research. I found a bewildering amount of information and misinformation on the internet but I was able to narrow my choice as follows. The machine was seven years old, so I didn't need a fancy or brand new graphics card. I wanted to find something used. I wanted something that had a couple of mini display ports because that was what the current graphics card had, and then I wouldn't have to fool around with adapters or anything like that. Uh, I wanted something that definitely had greater graphics capability than what I currently had, and I wanted something in which I didn't have to mess around with external power supplies or disconnecting the audio drive or anything like that in order to be able to plug it in. So I wanted something that could be safely powered from the motherboard inside of the Mac Pro. I also didn't want to have to fool around with having correct drivers for the graphics card that changed every time that you updated the operating system. So I wanted something where the drivers were natively built into OS X. Fortunately for me, I found exactly what I was looking for in the Radeon R9 280X. It's a card that, while not new, still packs a significant punch over the Radeon 5770. And as luck would have it, I found one on Craigslist that had already been flashed in order to take full advantage of the PCIe slot that it was going to be plugged into. I gave the guy a call, met him at a coffee shop, and $200 later, the Gigabyte Radeon R9 280X. So now let's plug it in, see if everything works, and then check the before and after benchmarks to see whether we got anywhere with it. Okay, we're ready to go. This isn't a big scary operation and I'm not too worried about it, so we'll see what happens. Uh, the first thing we have to do is remove the cover. The beautiful thing about these old Mac Pros is that's incredibly easy to do. There's one lever on the back, you flip it, and the cover comes out, exposing everything you need. We can see the ATI Radeon card right there. So we're gonna remove it first. The first thing we need to do is remove the two thumb screws for this little metal piece that holds all of the PCIe cards in place. There are two power supplies, two six pin power supplies right on the motherboard. This ATI Radeon 5770 is only using one of them, but we're gonna pull it out very gently, rocking it back and forth. There's a little switch on it. As soon as we pushed that out, it came out. So very easy. Now, there is a small bar that is also holding it in place. We need to move that out of the way in order to be able to Pull the graphics card out. So there's a plastic cover here that covers the fan system. There's a little white circular dot on it. Push it in and that'll allow this piece to be able to slide backwards, therefore allowing the Radeon to be able to come out. Now, there's a little, there we go. Very gentle, never use any force when pulling something like this out. And it slides right out. Woohoo. We'll hang on to this in case the other one ever goes bad and we need it for anything. Now, before I put the new card in, I'm going to take the power cables out and install those separately because it's my understanding that they're much easier to put in before you put the graphics card in. So let's take those out. There's one six pin and one eight pin, which is different than 
the previous Radeon card, which only had one six pin. In addition, the, the jacks that are on the motherboard are both six pin, but that's okay because this cable that came with it for the eight pin terminates in a six pin on the motherboard side anyway. So, as we can see, eight pin on this side, six pin on that side. We're gonna plug in the two six pin cables into the two six pin slots that we have down there. Just using feel and going gently and slowly. Come on. There's one, number one. You feel it click into place. All right, first one's in. Now let's plug in the second one. Do the same thing. Try to get it to click into place. Come on. Then there it goes. So both of our power cables are in. So we're gonna move those out of the way. Now, there's this little aluminum bar here, and this is another thing that's very important. There is a slot here on the Radeon, this little hooked key right here. You see that? Yeah, this little hooked key. And you have to make sure to move it forward and slip it underneath this little bar or else it'll break. So since we don't want that to happen, we're gonna be gentle and be careful not to force anything. So in it goes. to make sure that it is both in on that side with the power cables out of the way while underneath that. And I can feel that it is, so that's great. So now let's plug our six pin power in. Oops, go on. And then we're gonna plug in our eight pin power. wiggling and jiggling because we need to get a few things into place here to be able to hold it down. Most specifically, there we go. That's already better. And then once we get this thing back in place, it should be solid as a rock. Finger tightening it. Never needs anything more than that. Okay. There's no wiggle. There's not a lot of lateral movement. Once it sits down, uh, it should be solid and everything should be good to go. So we finish up by putting the lid back on. And we're done. Let's take it upstairs and see if it works. Okay, it's the next day. I plugged the graphics card in and one monitor of my two booted up. And regardless of how I switched the cables around, it was still only one monitor. So finally I pulled the computer out and tested it with both monitors and realized it was just a simple matter of jiggling around the mini display ports to be able to get them both to fit. So what I'm going to do, therefore, is clean out any junk by using some 100% isopropyl alcohol, pour it in a little plastic cup, and use chem wipes, that's not tissue paper, that's actual uh, paper with no fiber in it to be able to uh, clean electronics without leaving anything, and a small brush, and hopefully that'll clean up whatever issues are happening inside of the cart. So I'm gonna use this narrow brush that I have here for cleaning electronics. Just pour a little bit of the isopropyl alcohol in here. And then I'm gonna go here and slide it into the two mini display ports. Just giving it a little jiggle like that. Then, I'm gonna use the chem wipes to clean them up. We'll see what happens. Okay, so the story takes a weird turn from there. 
I thought it was just dirty oxidized inputs and that my magical alcohol would be able to clean everything up, but didn't do the job. Uh, so then I experimented. I was having all sorts of intermittent failures with the second monitor. No matter what order I would put the monitor cables in, the second one would be the one that would fail continuously. Had no idea what was going on. So next thing to try was a bunch of cables. So instead of these Monoprice six foot mini display port extension cables, I bought their premium line three foot extension cables and tried, tried one of those on the monitor that was failing. Didn't work, worked a little bit, then it failed again. Just absolutely tear your hair out kind of frustrating. Finally, I was so exasperated that I figured it had to be the monitor itself. It was just randomly going dead at the same time that I put the graphics card in. So I went to Fry's uh, and purchased an LG, you know, 24 inch monitor for $179 that the guy told me was great for video editing. Came back, plugged it into the Mac, and it just looked like absolute garbage. The pictures were great, but the fonts were just unreadable, unusable. There was no way I could be working on something like this in the long term. So I finally tried one more thing, which was to replace the six-foot extension cables on both monitors with three-foot cables. And once I did, then all of a sudden it started working again. Now, is this a coincidence? Is it gonna be able to work for good this way? I have no idea. But uh, for now, I'm knocking on wood, knock, knock, and making sure uh, to just count my blessings and be happy about the fact that both monitors are currently working. It is frustrating to not know exactly what the cause of the problem was. However, be that as it may, let's move on and take a look at the differences in performance once uh, I put the Radeon R9 in. Okay, well here's the system info before, and as you can see, uh, the original graphics card was the ATI Radeon HD 5770, one gigabyte of RAM. Here is the system info afterwards, and oh, that graphics card is now an AMD Radeon R9 286 with three gigabytes of RAM. I used the Heaven Graphics Benchmark software to try to get an idea as to where we were before and after. So here it is, before, running 40 frames per second with an overall score, whatever that means, of 1,010. Taking a look at the same benchmark after, we have nearly 74 frames per second and a score of 1860. So not quite double the power, which is perfectly acceptable considering I spent 200 bucks on the card. In any case, what's important is this. I'm now able to work fluidly and easily in DaVinci Resolve doing everything I need to do. So the good news along these lines is uh, if you have a Mac Pro 2010 or something around that era and you want to be able to upgrade the graphics, well, uh, you can certainly use a Radeon R9 280X and it will give you a decent speed boost for, you know, not too much money. So there you have it. The installation was not without its tech drama, and I never did figure out exactly what was wrong with the monitor connection, but all's well that ends well. The reality of the situation is I've managed to make an old Macintosh perform a whole lot better in terms of graphics capabilities, and editing video in DaVinci Resolve 14 is now a breeze thanks to the Radeon R9 280X graphics accelerator card. This is Nick for Under the Big Tree, and if you like what we're doing here, please feel free to share, like, and subscribe. But for now, over and out.